Welcome back to Cypress Academy, PSOC 6101. In an earlier video, we looked at interfacing with the thermistor on the E-Ink display shield. Now let's focus on the motion sensor. The motion sensor that's on the E-Ink display is a six axis motion sensor from Bosch, the IMU160. To communicate with this sensor, a digital interface is required. For this lesson, I'll be using the I2C master component to communicate and receive data from this sensor. And I'll use the UART to print out the acceleration data onto your terminal. When I start looking at an I2C sensor, I always like to make sure that I understand how to talk to it. So I go get a data sheet from the Bosch website. Hey, that's a pretty picture but I need a data sheet, so I click on Documents and Drivers. I'll look at the data sheet and see what's going on. Okay, I get it. This is a fairly normal register-based device. On page five, you can see there's a list of registers and the chip ID register looks interesting, so I click it. This says that if I read the 8-bit value in I2C register zero, I should get 11, 010001, also known as hex D1. But what is the address of the chip? Let's see here. Scan a little bit further down in the data sheet and looky there. On page 90, I find the I2C address of the chip as being 0x68. Okay, enough documentation. Let's see if we can talk to it with the bridge control panel. Start up the BCP then click to attach to the kit prog, then press the list button. A device for D068 shows up. What the list button does is send out all the possible I2C addresses and listen for who answers back. So D068, that makes good sense. Now let's see if the chip ID register has the right value. So let's write 68-0, then read 68x stop. Sure enough, the chip responds back with a D1. That's good. Now all I need to do is develop a driver that knows how to read and write all of those registers. No, 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 that doesn't sound like a good idea. I'm just joking. If you look back on the Bosch website, you'll see that they provide a link to a GitHub, which has a nice C driver. That's sweet. All right, let's start this thing by creating a new project. I'll call it Basic Motion Sensor. Drag and drop the I2C component into our schematic. Then drag in the UART component. Next, let's assign the pins. Let's see here, P60 and 61 for the I2C and P50 and 51 for the UART. Then I'll go to the build settings and turn on standard IO and free RTOS. Next, I'll generate the application to assemble all of the firmware into the project. Once that's done, I need to modify freeRTOS.h to get rid of the warnings and increase the size of the heap. Now I need to fix up standard IO user.h so I can print off. I'll include project.h and update the two macros to UART underscore one underscore HW. All right, now we're cooking with gas. In order to use the Bosch driver, the first thing to do is download it into my workspace by opening up a terminal, CDing into my workspace, then running git clone git at github colon Bosch sensor tech. If you're running on a Mac, you have git built in, but if you're running on a PC, you can install git for Windows or you can use Cygwin to run Git, or you can just download a zip file. Once I have the Bosch driver, I need to tell the compiler where it can find the include files. To do that, I right click on the project and change the build settings. Click on CM4 ARM GCC settings, then compiler, then general. Then I need to add the BMI driver to the include path. So I click on additional includes directories, Press the dot, dot, dot button, then click new, then navigate into the include path, which will be dot, dot, backslash, 
BMI 160 driver. Now I can add the actual files to my project. First, I'll click on the CM4 and select Add New Folder. I'll call it Bosch. Then I click on my new folder and click Add Existing Files. Navigate to the right folder on my desk and then select the two .h files and the .c file. This gets the files to be part of my project so I can go and edit them. Now we're ready to write the firmware, so go to the main cm4.c. At the top, add includes for the freeartos.h, task.h, standardio.h, and the bmi160.h. Remember, we got the bmi160.h from the GitHub site. Then create a variable of type struct bmi underscore dev, which I'll call bmi160dev. This structure is used as the interface point to your specific BMI 160. Now that the driver is part of my project, I need to create the Bosch HAL. HAL stands for Hardware Abstraction Layer. There are two functions that you need to create, one called BMI 160 Burst Write, which can write values to the I2C master into the device, and one called BMI 160 Burst Read, which can read values via the I2C master in your PSOC 6 into your firmware. Obviously, you can type this code from my screen, or if I were you, I would go get it out of my PSOC Creator workspace. But it's your choice. First, the burst write. It takes four arguments, the I2C address, the register you want to write, the data you want to write, and finally, the number of bytes you want to write. Okay, this is pretty easy. Start by using the PDL functions. CY SCB I2C master send start. Next, you send the register you want to write. Then for loop through all the bytes and write them using the CY SCB master write byte. Finally, send a stop using CY SCB I2C master send stop. Now I need to create the read function. The way that it works is it sends an I2C start, then writes the address it wants to read. Then it sends an I2C restart. Then it sends I2C reads with an ACK until it's done reading. Then it sends the final read and a NAC saying it's done reading. And finally, it sends a I2C stop. Now I need to create a function to initialize the chip. I'll call it BMI init. This function will wait for 100 milliseconds for the BMI to boot, then set up the BMI structure with a function pointer to the read, then the write, then a delay function, and finally the I2C address of my BMI 160. Once the structure is set up, I can call the initialization function. Now I need to configure the sensor. First, I'll set up the gyro, output data rate, range, and bandwidth. Let's see here. I'll put it into normal power mode. Then I set up the accelerometer part of the chip. The first is the output data rate to 1600 Hz, then the range, the bandwidth, and the power mode. Next, I call the function to set my configuration. Finally, I wait 50 milliseconds for it all to take effect. After all this junk, I'm finally ready to get some acceleration numbers. So I'll create a task called motion task. It will start up the I2C master, start up the BMI 160. The driver library has a function called BMI 160 get sensor data. You have to pass it a pointer to a structure for it to save the data of the type struct BMI 160 sensor data. So I'll declare that structure. This will return the acceleration for the X, Y, and Z axes as an integer counts between negative 32,767 and plus 32,768. I have set it at 2G, so 32,768 counts is plus 2G. Finally, the main loop, which will infinitely loop, first reading the sensor data, turning counts into GForce values, and finally printing it all out on the UART. Now that I have a task, I create the main start, start the UART, create the motion sensor task, and finally start the scheduler. Now we do the normal build program debug loop. When I start the terminal program, I can see with the kit sitting on my desk, it's about 001. 
When I turn it over, I can see that it's close to zero, zero, minus one. Okay, that makes good sense. Remember, the Earth is pulling down on everything with about one G of gravity. In the next video, I'll add the accelerometer to the remote control project so you can drive the robot arm with the two axes of motion, the x-axis and the y-axis. As always, you can post your comments and questions in our PSOC 6 community, or you're welcome to email me at alan underscore hawes at cypress.com or tweet me at askiotexpert. Thank you. <laughs>